Hey guys, it's Adam from Musa Pixel, and welcome back. Now you'll notice things are different this week. For instance, I'm live. <laughs> and the reason being is um, I have a very sh personal and very important message I'd like to share with you with regards to the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial. And that's why I'm kind of breaking off the usual style of my videos, my usual talks, um, because I want to speak to you face to face. I want to I want to share a person to person message. And my message is not aimed specifically at artists like most of my videos usually are. This week's video is aimed at everybody. And I'd like this message to reach as many people as possible because I really honestly feel that the perspective I want to share with you today and the obligation I feel I have to you today um, is one that hasn't been spoken about. And I think it's a very important perspective to have because, <laughs> and this is a subject that, this is, a, this is a, a video that I've really thought, I've really considered long and hard of whether or not I want to do this in the first place, whether or not I think it's a good idea, because this involves real feelings and real people. Um, but with the exception of the celebrity, of course, and the substance abuse side of it, and the level of physical violence that was that 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 Johnny has had to endure alongside all this whole situation with Amber Heard, um, I can say with absolute confidence that listening to Johnny Depp through that entire trial has been somebody reminding me of my past. Um, I lived through that eerily uh, to an eerily close level where it, it, you could almost recite everything he said and have a direct direct reflection on my own story verbatim again minus those few exceptions that i shared with you um however i want to share my my experience with you but not from the perspective of the suffering i went through or anything like that more from the perspective of somebody who went through it a long time ago and somebody who had had a chance to experience what Johnny's experienced in great degree, um, suffer the consequences of that, live through the consequences over a very long term, but most importantly, get over it, learn from it, uh, um, become the wiser for it. And in fact, I would say that, that what I experienced has probably been one of the most important and defining moments in my life, despite how challenging it was. And it was very challenging okay so to get us started started and i kind of have to get to the point because i can't make this video too too long i'm kind of limited on how much time i have i want to start with my kind of opinion where i stand with regards to this whole trial and what my feelings are and i think a lot of my feelings are very shared by a very large majority of us with regards to to johnny depp may i start by saying johnny i am extremely happy <laughs> that that you didn't wait for nothing. And I'm extremely happy that, that, that you experienced the outcome that you did because it could have turned out very, very differently for you. In fact, for over six years, it did turn out very differently for him. And this was literally a second chance that a lot of people don't get. So I'm extremely happy for that. I also, like a lot of people, feel a renewed sense of faith in humanity. I think that the world was well overdue for some good news after the high profile cases where the worst outcome could possibly have come of it to COVID to just, you know, to political bullshit. We've been dealing with so much crap for so many years with nothing but bad news we've had to swallow. It feels really good to see a good person win. So I think that I think that has won. You didn't. You haven't only won our hearts through being a kind and good person over the years, these years, but nobody could have deserved an outcome like that more than you. So there you go. Amber Heard. How do I feel about what Amber Heard did? What she suffered as a consequence of that, at least now, and her future. Um. I'm, for starters, happy that she was caught. I'm happy that she was exposed. I'm happy that people can look at her and see this beautiful, 
uh, a petite, frail-looking thing, and she's lifted the veil of of that stereotype in a very, very effective way that I feel has not destroyed the Me Too movement, like a lot of idiots like to say. I think she. I think she, this whole this whole experience is, has helped to update the Me Too movement. I think that it is a more inclusive movement now as a result of it. And being able to see somebody who's as idealistically pretty be regarded and be seen as also being somebody who could be incredibly terrifying and very damaging is a very good thing for society. It's not good for her. Not by any stretch, but it's a very good thing for society. It's op- look at all the body language and the, the the legal conversations that have been opened up, where people are becoming wiser to the seriousness that is, well, in most part, narcissism, histrionic, uh, borderline personality disorder. Okay, these are all very very serious illnesses, and we're seeing it firsthand, all packaged in this pretty little bouquet called Amber Heard. Now that said. Do I consider myself a member of the angry mob who are like, yeah, stick it to her, right? Um, who grabs his, his, his pitchfork and joins the mob? No. In fact, I would say that doing that is a very, very bad idea. From the experience, from somebody who has suffered my own Amber Heard. <laughs> and I mean, not only suffered my Amber Heard with regards to personality, but suffered my Amber Heard with regards to even appearance, you know. Um, I've been seduced by that kind of beauty as well and that kind of love bombing and that kind of everything. Um, And through my experiences, when my life was shattered and reforged, I had to learn certain important things in order to find my own peace and and to find reason in this and to find a balanced perspective of it so that the so that I myself did not continue on the pattern of abuse. How do I regard Amber Heard through the eyes of experience? I think she's sick. And I think she needs help. Do I think she's somebody who needs sympathy and pity and that she's a poor victim of blah, blah, blah of herself? Yes and no. Um, yes, in the sense that she's a victim of her own condition, but no, in the sense that she chose to, the choices she made as a result of her condition are inexcusable. How she was perfectly willing to destroy a good man's hard earned name and the, and the, and the reputation of his family and every single loved one she's ever left lying in the road behind her. That's her own bullshit to deal with, but it is very much in part to her condition. And what I mean by condition, what I mean by sick is, you need to put this into perspective if you haven't experienced it. There are different types of conditions that affect the brain, the feelings, the way you behave. We are all chemicals and neurons and and signals and wires and plugs, so to speak. Some of these conditions, like depression, anxiety, ADHD, to name a few, are generally conditions that garner sympathy. You want to nurture, you want to offer help, you want to offer medication to people like that, right? To help them get through it because they they are vulnerable and their vulnerability is what comes out. And then there's others like borderline personality disorder where you can't control the intensity and the, the huge fluctuations of your behavior from intensely angry to intensely loving to blah, blah, blah to narcissism, which very profoundly impacts your ability to empathize. (laughs) Probably one of the most important qualities a human being can have is empathy, their ability to feel the feelings of others. When you don't have that ability, imagine just how easy it is for you to become a villain, right? That she can tragically not have any clue of just how much she's hurt anybody. In fact, I think that's to her benefit under the circumstances as things stand right now, because I think if she for two seconds could feel, authentically feel what she's done to not only Johnny Depp, but to her family and to her parents and to every loved one she's had and to her friends that all through her past, 
I don't think she would be able to survive in her own skin for a single day. I think she would come to a swift end voluntarily if she could feel what she's done to others. So for the meantime, I think that her narcissism is keeping her alive, to be quite honest with you. And I do honestly believe that she deserves the opportunity to heal. She deserves the opportunity to get help. And it's for that reason that as much as I truly do respect and admire the incredible dedication and hard work and integrity and the belief of a belief in oneself that her lawyers, particularly her female lawyer, who I can't remember what her name is, put into the trial where she's still even after the case, after the fact, doing everything she can to come to Amber's defense um, is admirable and shows her integrity and how much of her heart and soul she puts into her work. So I really do respect her for what she's doing, but I think it's also kind of the equivalent behavior of a very well-meaning, very loving, but very irresponsible parent where a parent that will turn their a blind eye to the damage that their child or in this case her client has and I think that's an incredible disservice to somebody who has narcissism or any of the conditions that Amber Heard has because narcissists already possess an overwhelming gift of being able to pass the blame off to other people and I think that her lawyers only giving her, like her parents and probably well-meaning friends in the past have done for her as well, offering her a way out. And I think that Emma Heard needs to slowly but surely come to terms with the reality of who she is. And I think it's a very tragic reality that's going to take a long time, if ever. But I do think she deserves the opportunity to be able to redeem herself. And I would welcome the day that she would publicly say, I can't believe the person I've been and mean it and to show some real authentic emotion but maybe that's not pot maybe that's wishful thinking but i do recognize that her illness is an illness that can that is the type of illness that leads to very often being disliked and hated to being falsely judged because of how it leads to abuse or how it comes across as coldness at the other end so that's how i feel about that then comes <clears throat> Um, the reality of Johnny Depp's situation um, that I went through, that I felt, and he's been through this for over six years. Albeit his celebrity has garnered him a lot of respect and a lot of admiration and a lot of superficial support, but I think the support he needs is really the personal stuff. And I think that if you really want to paint a picture of what he's been through, Imagine sacrificing everything you have for somebody who you fall more deeply in love with than you could possibly imagine. And that is, unfortunately, the amazing gift that a narcissist has to the unsuspecting victim. They have an unbelievable, unbelievable ability to make you fall for them by basically becoming the ideal reflection of yourself. Um, by showing you that you have so much in common, shared passions, shared fashion, not realizing that that person has completely mimicked themselves to be that ideal partner for you. They had researched you and planned this all ahead of time. And um, uh, you fall for them. And he sacrificed it all. His loving wife, Vanessa Paradis, who he's with for many, many years, the mother of his children, his beautiful children, and went all in with Amber Heard. <clears throat> and shortly thereafter, lost the bet. And some trigger moment happened in that relationship. I'm sure he knows very well what I'm talking about. Some trigger moment happened where he said something wrong. He did something wrong. He did something that didn't fit into this mold that Amber so desperately needed to maintain. This illusion of perfection that she had created of him under certain very, very, very fickle and very fragile circumstances. And she flicked the switch. And that switch is, from a narcissist's perspective, you go from being a god to being a slug. Like that like bang right overnight and all of a sudden she probably snapped and turned on him and he was hit he was hit with an emotional barrage 
that he didn't see coming. And by this point, it's maybe it's, I, I don't know if they were married. I think they weren't either married at this point. They had, she'd shown him signs, but obviously he was naive to the reality of what she was and what was going to happen moving forward. And he married her. And it was a very short-lived marriage, wasn't it? And it was a very tumultuous and yes, very passionate, but incredibly, incredibly emotionally exhausting relationship that was relentless. And when that person flips the switch on you, they're also doing so under the guise of blaming you for causing that. So you spend, with all the love and passion you have for this person, you put every single iota of yourself into making it work. And it's like a drug. You can never get back to that baseline again, can you? It just keeps on falling further and further and further and further, the harder, the harder, harder, harder you try. You can't get back until eventually it breaks. And when it breaks, that break is usually more devastating than anything you've ever experienced. That break up with him, and I remember hearing, I watch a lot of Dr. Grande, I have for years, I like his channel, and he was talking, it was a video years ago where he was talking about a phone conversation where Johnny Depp had mentioned to her how he loved her despite the fact that she probably didn't feel the same way in return. He had, at that point in the relationship, come to terms with the fact that, well, after that breakup, whatever led to that horrible, agonizing breakup, the worst, most worst, devastating heartbreak he probably ever felt in his life, that wasn't the hardest part. In fact, he had just gotten started with the pain because it's not the heartbreak that's the hardest part. It's the day after. And I mean, in many cases, almost exactly the day after when you realize that they're already onto the, they've already found your replacement. And there isn't a single sign of any kind of pain or suffering on their face, despite the fact that you are completely emotionally defeated. And that is the straw that breaks the camel's back. I know it's the straw that broke mine. And that was the day that my soul shattered. I shattered. I broke. I, she broke me. Just like Amber broke Depp. But she's just getting started because she feels no remorse. She feels completely entitled to everything she's done. And it's your fault as far as she's concerned. And you're broken up. So there's no rules on, he doesn't own her. So she's off to the next one. And that's exactly what she did. In fact, he probably realizes soon thereafter that she probably already had several replacements lined up before they even broke up. So that transition for a narcissist is a very smooth one the day after they break up because she had already been planning for that date by all the people she invited into their house, right? And to add insult to injury and compounded by his incredible celebrity, she defames him. She accuses him of being the most heinous, disgusting human being on earth for nothing more, nothing less than a little bit of extra sympathy and, and, and popularity on her part to help support whatever sympathy, whatever attention she can garner from society. It took only a couple of years for her to destroy him and then exsanguinate him of everything he had to offer and discard him on the side of the street. But then... She got selfish. She figured, shit, he's a good resource. <laughs> he's, very, he's a very plentiful resource. So she tried to get a little bit more out of him. And that's when the whole op-ed thing happened. And that's when she started to bring up extra allegations of sexual abuse, which eventually, ironically, was the beginning of the end for Emma Heard because she started to paint a picture with such careless abandon such a, a, a villainous picture of Johnny Depp. She didn't have anything to back it up. And the bigger her story get, got, the more tragic her story got, the more she started to discredit her own story. Thankfully. But it didn't mean it, dra it didn't drag him through the dirt in the process. Until six years later. Six fucking years later. And yeah, that he had a lot of supportive people. And there were a lot of people on social media that support him. But there were a lot of people that didn't. And it came at the detriment of his job. 
people didn't want to work with him because of the name he had associated with him that he never fucking deserved. And I don't give a shit about the drugs and I don't personally give a shit about that slamming cupboard. That slamming cupboard video is not, did not demonstrate to me a man who was unhinged and violent. That was a man who had his back turned to Amber, who was screaming the word motherfucker, but he was screaming like motherfucker. That was the most muted curse I've ever heard come out of a man who has the absolute, the most poetic gift of vitriolic visualizations of profanity I've ever fucking heard in my life. It is, to somebody with a dark sense of humor who's raised on Monty Python, like I was too, it was some pretty sick shit and pretty fucking poetically beautifully written at the same time. That was him, that was him skinning her alive with his mouth to a friend so he could get it out of his fucking system. That's not an abuser's behavior. That's a man who's letting it out in a private place to somebody he trusts. That's what he was doing. And if he didn't do it that, he would have done it to his, he would have smashed his knuckles doing it instead. So instead he did it with his mouth and nobody got hurt. So where is he now? Well, He's getting, he's got his life back. He's getting standing ovations everywhere he goes. And Amber Heard is now the witch on a stake who's being burned alive by social media. I personally don't endorse these fucking thumbnails of Amber Heard with her crying next to a picture, a smug look of Johnny Depp looking at her going, got you, bitch. I, I don't endorse that at all. I think that's gross. And it's not helping anybody. And I don't think that Johnny Depp would like that either. He did, and very very possibly still does, love her, despite how much he also probably despises her. I don't think that's necessary. But I do think that I know from personal experience the incredible damage to your health that this level and this lengthy amount of stress puts on the body and he needs some real time to heal from all of this because that level of stress that he's been through not to mention the stress the stress of coming off of substance abuse um that takes a very serious toll on your body and he has some healing to do and thankfully he has the support of society to do that but i'm worried about him I'm still worried. I'm particularly worried about him right now because yeah, that's a lot for the, that's a lot for him to go through. And he, he basically went through everything I went through amplified a hundred times by his fame and his substance abuse. <clears throat> As for you, my dear lady or gentleman who's listening to this, who's probably furious at Ember Heard and wants, wants only the worst to come of her. I want to tell you something. One of the most important lessons I've learned, and if you can take anything away from what I'm sharing with you today, it's the fact that when I was utterly defeated, and I was defeated, and I was shattered, and I had to pick the pieces of my what le oh, I had left of myself left, I realized those little shards of self that I had left were the shards that mattered. It was my beating heart, it was the air in my lungs, and most importantly, the choice I had to not do the same, that I had the will to not become an abuser as a result of the abuse that I had suffered myself. That's all I had was my choice, but that's all we are when everything else is, everything else is washed away. And I had the choice to become vindictive and vengeful and spiteful but I instead that day learned the most incredible strength you could ever possess. The strength to not. The strength to choose what is best for you. To find yourself and say, you're, well, you're capable and you have the freedom to do whatever you want to me. But I have the choice to do what I want. And I'm not going to let you dictate the choices that I make in my own life. I'm not going to let you diminish my worth. And you right now, my friend, have a choice to either become a part of the hateful, ignorant mob and pick up your pitchfork and all stand outside like a bunch of, bunch of idiots, or you can choose to whomever has wronged you in your life 
and whoever you see gets wronged, you can choose to instead serve as the better example. And it's for that reason that I love Johnny Depp. And it's the reason why I have so much fucking respect, why, why the world respects him so much is because despite everything he's been through, he stood up for his family. He, distu- he stood up for what was right. He continued to be the kind-hearted person he is and didn't let somebody like that corrupt him. And if you want any, if you want any better testament to the quality that is him, look at his little girl his 23-year-old little girl, Lily Rose. Because I look at a woman who's got integrity. I look at a woman who's loved. I look at a woman who's strong, who's independent, who has an incredible sense of self. And that is all the evidence I need to know that she's a product of very good quality parents. And that's all the evidence I need to believe in him and his lovely ex-wife, Vanessa Paradis. It's right there in Lily Rose's face. (laughs) Um, so yes so to Johnny congratulations to Amber it's time for you to get some help and to everybody else thank you for listening take care